So you don't have time to consume an entire podcast. That's okay. Enjoy the highlights on TRS Clips. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell icon. What scares you about technology going forward, and what should scare audiences? <laughs> the two questions. The first part is, I'm very, very blessed and fortunate in my life, Ranveer. You get scared about things where you have wrong assumptions or wrong understanding with. If you think about it. the people who are not scared of ghost are the ghost busters mm. the people who are not scared of snakes are the ones who know about snakes reasonably well so what does technology or you know things about technology that scare me nothing in fact i don't know anything in my life that scares me i'm very fortunate that way because i understand that reason at the first principle level let's put it like that so when you do that it's like it's like i'm very comfortable and there's nothing that scares me data backed what i can tell you and i think that's what you're trying to get to that can technology be used for wrong purposes the answer is an absolute yes when albert einstein came up with the formula of e equals mc square he wrote a letter to the president of the united states saying that this formula itself is so powerful which can those days they used to have bombs which could bomb one ship and he said that if you use this formula for destructive purposes which it happened in the future we saw hiroshima and nagasaki for the same you will not destroy ships you will destroy an entire port and even cities and the reason i'm saying that is it is the same formula which gives us today usable reusable nuclear energy which is now used to power a lot of our houses etc cetera, etc cetera. but it's the same formula which actually created the atom bomb mm. technology is exactly that the moment you use it for the wrong purposes there's a lot of wrong that you can do the moment the way you use it in a positive way you actually create a very positive impact mm. so i mean i'm saying it will be used for bad mm. it will be used for good Uh, i hope it's used more for good than bad but that's that's my views around you know the fear of technology ranveer and what your organization does is basically provide security to the everyday person and the everyday business to protect those people or that business from the dangers of technology that are very possible in the modern day mm. so you're sort of making an armor and maybe weapons for those people to protect themselves absolutely okay. so that's the most simplest thing and you put it very beautifully uh what we basically try and do we know that there are too many armors already out there for cyber security when it comes to businesses mm. what we actually do and i'm going slightly deeper Go here where we take all signals from all armors so let's take an example any large bank right and we work with the largest banks on the planet whether it's in new york or it's in navi mumbai <laughs> we 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 work with uh, some really large banks so they have anywhere between 100 to 150 cyber security products in their environment they'll have an antivirus they'll have a firewall they will have a dlp sim blah 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 what we do is we take signals from all of these products put them together in a centralized data lake we've created algorithms with mit in boston so we've been doing a lot of joint research with mit for the last 3 and a half years where we predict hacks mm so we say what is the likelihood that there will be a ransomware attack in a bank in the next 12 months and it's pure application of machine learning and data science that we apply to be able to it's almost like an oracle which can predict and if you think about it there are a lot of industries which do it for example the insurance industry it only works on predicting hurricanes mm. it works on predicting you know whether somebody will die at some point or not and when you take the 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 probability across a particular sample set of users you can actually predict that look will a particular event happen in a given sample set of audience so let me get this straight <laughs> you yourself understand how to hack systems of course. okay that's established yes now I know that you're an engineer you're from IIT you're from IIT Bombay Well that's a funny thing I was a visiting faculty oh, okay and then we got incubated from IIT Bombay Okay so IIT Bombay is a shareholder of the company and of course we spent a few years there I'm from a college in Jaipur it's okay. a college called LNM IIT this is Ellen Mittal's dream to make an IIT Got it nice Uh so because you have an engineering background yes you probably perceive the world and your subject extremely mathematically and you're a coder so again that whole <laughs> mathematical inclination is reinforced now you yourself and your team of hackers i would i'd say your team of people who are capable of hacking understand uh 
okay these are probably the weak uh, points in the world's internet map yep and you say that if we had to hack some places it would be these places yep that's where the evil hackers will try hacking yep uh and somehow you're able to quantify the data in your own mind and build out algorithms and build out systems which will protect exactly those weak points you put it extremely beautifully you're absolutely okay. right and when we what we do there is that and going back to a very cliche dhoom ka line that sure. chor ko pakadne ke liye chor ki tarah sochna padta hai mm. so so definitely you know we are the people who actually for many years have been even ethically hacking these big banks and big airports and big e-commerce companies to show them vulnerabilities and loopholes mm. which they need to quickly patch before a hacker can actually intrude into those systems which are out there is it a part of your sales game <laughs> you go hey by the way we hacked your system <laughs> <laughs> well you you know what that has happened in the past where that that has happened because and by the way a lot of times our customers ask us for the same because when they say that okay show me how competent you are mm. you actually go ahead and and of course you do that with permission with authorization we sign an nda we sign the authorization to try to breach them in a given time frame of you know say 7 days or 14 days and we actually run a campaign where we try to intrude into their systems we'll intrude through so a large bank will have say 25000 systems right so you can actually intrude through one system and then do something called lateral movement because the system is connected to the vpn which is the internal network and you can hop from one system to the other to the other till the time you get to that particular system which is storing the databases where transactions happen mm. so this was i think um, last month uh, where we demonstrated to a very very large bank in europe how to transfer money from any account to any account live so we transferred money from the ceo's account to the head of security's account in real time mm. and they're like oh my god is this real and we showed them that and this is very normal so we probably you know get to see this like all the time on how so it's it's like for a lot of people who don't come from my world it might be like hey is it even possible i thought systems were supposed to be protected i wish it was that idealistic mm. on when you look at systems and security mm.